Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to NBA Got Game TV. Thanks for tuning in. The NBA has some of the greatest underdog stories, and this one right here is one of the greatest. Spot Webb was one of the shortest players to ever play the game, and he came in at a time where the big guys ruled the NBA world. But before we start with this video, if you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Also underneath the video, you will see a link to our Facebook page. Likes are really appreciated. And I would say without any more blah blah, let's start the video. As a native of Dallas, Texas, from the Atlanta Hawks, standing 5'7", Spud Well. This guy don't have a chance. 5'7", in Spud Webb from this area. Uh, has gotten a lot of national publicity lately, a great leaper, and he will really turn the crowd on. But I don't think he's a, a contestant to win this thing. Anthony Jerome, aka Spud Webb, was born on the 13th of July in 1963 in Dallas, Texas. There he was living in a small three-bedroom home with his parents and his five siblings. Spud started playing basketball at a very young age and dreamt of becoming an NBA player. Even though he was always the smallest kid, nobody could jump as high as Spud. On one special day, the young teenager grabbed the ball, saw through the air and dunked the basketball with two hands. Everybody who saw that play knew that he was something special. Spud tried out for his high school team, but he was cut saying that he was way too small to play. It wouldn't be the last time he would hear those words. One day he was allowed to play and the guy scored 20 points. My junior year I didn't make the varsity. I probably was 4'11", probably at the time. And by the time my senior year, I was like maybe 5'4", somewhere around there. But I ended up starting on, on the varsity and uh, probably all state or all city average, probably close to 30 points a game. So uh, I just was playing in the All-Star game and the guy uh, coached at uh, Midland College was Jerry Stone. And he came like, you want to go to Midland? I'm like, sure, <laughs> I have nowhere else, where else to go, you know? And I'm one of those guys that always is kind of on the lookout for unusual stories. I used to talk to the editors at Sports Illustrated somewhere. I saw a little, like, maybe two-line thing about some little guy whose name was Spud Webb. Well, I love names, good nicknames. And uh, it said this guy was a great basketball player and could jump to the moon, so to speak. So I thought, got to do something on this guy. And uh, so I went down to Midland, which is not really near anything at all. <laughs> and uh, met up with Spud and, and uh, just had a delightful time. That article puts you on the spotlight of, uh, you know, people are now going to watch you and see if you really can play. And we went to Hutchins, Kansas, which is our, the Final Four the National Junior College Championship. In the last game, we played the team that had uh, like <laughs> 16, 6, 7 guys. And they were 34 and 0. And uh, we were sitting there watching them one more. Look, look at those big old guys down there in the coach stone. Like, yo, look at them. We're going to be, you know. So I ended up scoring like 34 points the game. We won the uh, National Junior College Championship. As we watch the old footage, we see the jump ball won in overtime by Midland. Spud comes down, immediately hits a jump shot, and that put them ahead to eventually stay. And I think even more interesting is the end when the award is being presented. The MVP goes to Spud Webb. And you see his demeanor, very stoic. Not a whole lot to say, but that's what Spud was all about. This is a, quite a team they had there at Midland, but I don't think anybody at that point uh, thought that he would be an NBA star, or play in the NBA. I really don't think they 
thought he'd ever play, you know, much beyond junior college. After, uh, you know, winning every honor you can make in junior college, there wasn't no schools coming knocking at the door, knocking the door down. And uh, I guess I got a little discouraged about that, but uh, once, uh, it was like maybe a month or two before uh, school started and the guy at uh, NC State changed his mind about going in, uh, they called him like, you want to come to NC State? This boy was a rock star at NC State. Uh, the fans, and I think the nation at that time, uh, was in love uh, with his game and his ability to do uh, some of the things that he was able to do on, on basketball for. Spud was probably, if not the clickest, right behind Muggsy, was probably the quickest guy that you had to guard individually with the basketball. He was actually a freak of nature. I had never seen anything like him, uh, never played anything like any, anyone like him. And, and on the offensive end, he was just a nightmare. Well, Spud was quick. You know, even though we were small, we totally different type of players. Uh, he was quick in the open court. Uh, he had. A lot of his jumping ability was unbelievable. Uh, he can get off the floor and he had a, a, a good ability, a, a knack of where to get a shot off and how to get it off. You know, we was the fastest one on the floor, so we had to chase each other around. That was kind of tough to do. When Spot's college career came to an end, chances weren't too good for him to be drafted by an NBA team. In the 1980s, the NBA didn't have their own development league. The CBA was a semi-professional basketball league that gave young players a chance to present themselves in front of NBA scouts. Also, a brand new league was founded, called the USBL. Spud decided to give it a shot and signed with the Rhode Island Goals. This is where he met one of his closest friends, Manute Bowl. Spud Webb sees the opening and takes advantage beautifully. Well, I think it was the first year the USBL started up. Uh, me, it was me, uh, Manute Bowl, all those projects, players. We was in Rhode Island. Kevin was great. He was coming from all those great years with uh, the Celtics and uh, he just, you know, just coached us to what he knew and try to tell us uh, what to expect in the NBA and what the NBA scouts are expecting for us. So we had the Manute Bowl, who's the opposite end of the spectrum in terms of physical stature from Spud. And he put up some numbers that were intriguing, but people really didn't know what to make of him either for the opposite reasons. He was just under seven foot seven in bare feet. Uh, but he only weighed 190 pounds. Playing the U.S. Bill with Manute was, was, was a riot because you laughed 24 hours. He's the funniest guy you ever meet in your life. We actually lived together and rode to practice together, and it was the funnest times of my life. He thought he had a good shot to be a catalyst-type player, which, you know, again, I have to give some credit to Mike Fratello because he's the guy that gave him a real chance like that where other, other people probably weren't going to give him. I honestly can remember that the first day we flew him in, when Detroit had waved him, we flew him in, we were playing an exhibition game. And he comes in and we give him a uniform and I remember talking to him before the game and I said, don't worry about anything. No plays, don't worry. When you get the ball, I just want you to go as fast as you can from one end of the court to the other end of the court. Either get a shot or create a shot for somebody else. In college, they can kind of contain you and you can't really find your advantages because of the zones. but. You know, in a professional level, it's man to man, and you can beat your man every time. And at that time in the league, you did not see many of the smaller players, but Mike felt that he could make the size work to his advantage because other teams would say, hey, we can kill this guy, we take him down low, but that, that didn't always happen. He didn't like when big guys tried to post him up in the game. Actually, we enjoyed it because we knew what was going to happen. He always said, you use your size, I'll use my speed. I think one of the first dunks I've seen him do was against the Lakers, coming down the lane, uh, and it was Kareem and Magic, and I, I want to say it was Kurt Rambis, and he threw it down. To Webb in the open floor. And everybody turned around and looked at it like, huh, he can play. <laughs> you know, so we both, myself, Doc Rivers, went to Mike Fratello and said, we can't cut this guy. In 1986, at the NBA All-Star Game, Spud Webb made history. The dunk contest was known for the tallest players like Dominique Wilkins, Michael Jordan, Larry Noss, and Dr. J. Never before did a short guy like Spud enter. Clutch move. 
That gets him. What a crowd loves it. Without being able to palm the ball. Out of sight. comes through in the clutch. So much excitement wow. around the NBA. It's really terrific to see that happen. And what that does, it gives so much hope to all the little men who play the game of basketball throughout the country. After winning the NBA dunk contest, Spud made a name for himself. For the next three years, Spud was the backup point guard for the Atlanta Hawks, averaging about six points and four assists a game. In 1990, he became a starter and his stats improved drastically. 13 points and six assists per game to be precise. In 1992, he was traded to the Sacramento Kings, where he became a starter, averaging about 15 points a game. He became one of the better point guards in the league, but because the NBA was filled with superstars, but got easily overlooked. He ended his career in 1998 with the Orlando Magic. So how good was Spud Webb? Even though he never was an all-star, he left his mark. He gave hope to many little players, like Earl Boykins and Nate Robinson, that you don't have to be tall to become an NBA player. Hey, and thanks for watching this video. We really hope you enjoy our content and if you'd like to support our channel you can do these things. First subscribe to our channel and click the notifications button so you will always be up to date when we upload a new video and also check out our Facebook page you will find the link underneath the video. Likes are very appreciated. Thanks a lot.